five. And heads, I got a five. And heads, that's going to be purple. Well, I have been busy creating my probability dice art challenge here and you can see that I am choosing my design based on what I roll on the die and then choosing the color based on what I flip on my coin and this is leaving me thinking about sample space so sample space is a new word probably for most of us and remember it just means all the possible outcomes and this is a pretty big group of possible outcomes, which me, left me thinking that if I wanted to think about all of them and be able to list the sample space, that it might help to build a tree diagram so I could count them and see all of those possible outcomes in my sample space. So let's see if we can draw the tree diagram that matches this probability um, task that we're working on. So I started by listing all of the possible things that I could get when I rolled my die. These are all of the designs that I am drawing for one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then if I'm thinking about um, what on my next thing, after I finish rolling my die, then I will flip the coin. So I would now list those as the second part of my tree diagram. So if I roll, let's say I rolled a one and I got this spiral, well, the next thing I've got to do is flip my coin and it would be possible that I could flip heads, which if we peek back over here, could give me purple. Okay, so I'll do a P for purple. And I also could flip heads, which would give me green. So those are two possible outcomes if I rolled a one for my first one. Well, you know what? The same thing could be here if I rolled a two. I could flip purple next or green next. Same thing here, I could get purple next or green next. Purple here, or it could be green. Purple here, green. Purple here, green. And then I can read this. Now I have a, a diagram that's gonna tell me all of my possible outcomes. So if I read it at the top, I could have a spiral drawn in purple, a spiral drawn in green, a spiral drawn in, I mean a wavy shape drawn in purple all on down the line. So I can use this now to see how many possible outcomes there are. I can just count this second column in my tree diagram. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 possible outcomes in this um, artwork that I'm doing. So I my f absolute favorite thing to draw is the purple flower. And I was kind of curious of what is the probability that I would draw a purple flower. So we want to write the probability as a fraction. And the denominator is going to be all of the possible outcomes. And we just found that out. There are 12 of them. So now I want to look for the favorable outcomes or the, which ones have a purple flower. So here's the flower. And there's only one purple flower in all of the possible outcomes. So my probability of drawing a purple flower is 1 12th. That is pretty small. That's pretty unlikely that I will do that. Well, let's see if we can find one maybe with a bigger probability. What's the probability that you will draw a spiraling shape? So let's look, take a look at the shapes. I think this one is a circular spiral shape, but I also think this one right here is sort of a square spiral. So I think that both of these are spiraling, and there's two prob there's two outcomes that have this one as a, a, have this spiral, and two outcomes like this for this spiral. So one, two, three, four favorable outcomes, and there's still 12 possible outcomes altogether. So the probability that I'm going to um, draw a spiraling shape is more likely than the one we did before, but it's still unlikely that I'm going to draw it because it's less than one half. Up next, you're going to use your math artwork to create a tree diagram and then use it to answer some questions.